All right, maybe we might be getting a little bit more insight into why um, Isaiah Bugs was pushed down the depth chart. Excuse me, since I done eat my lunch. Um, <clears throat> why he got pushed down the depth chart. Now, Anazarki did an interview, or I read the interview on M Live, and he basically said that his career was in jeopardy. That he had a fusion, a transfusion in his back between his L5 and S1. And basically, not a lot of people who get that surgery in football are able to return to football. So his career was in jeopardy. So um, so Brad Holmes really did it that time and got damaged goods. But apparently, you know, him going through training camp, him making it through preseason and all that type of stuff, um, he seemed to be ready to rock and roll. I believe the depth chart showed that Aline McNeil, and this is the depth chart from preseason, take it for the grain of salt, that he and Malene McNeil would be the starting defensive tackles. And y'all noted that I, I, you know, remember I noted I didn't like that, and I explained why. Um, But apparently he said he ready to F people up. Um, He said he ready to go. He ready to rock and roll. And he ready to go. He said a lot of people don't survive that surgery. He said the surgery would have been a lot simpler had he had the transfusion in his neck. I believe I read that right. He said it had been, you know, it had been a lot easier to recover if he had it in his neck. Now, he said also it was another surgery that's totally different that he easily could have recovered from. So now we kind of getting some insight why he didn't want to get the surgery and wanted to see if it was going to heal on his own because, you know, it sounded like it was a good chance that he wasn't going to return to football. So he tried to allow the surgery to heal on his own. Now, the question is, you know, how far the draft would he have fought, failed if the Lions didn't take him in the second round with that type of injury? And my big red flag was if he had that injury, he was coming off a year in which he didn't play football. That was the biggest red flag. You didn't play football all that last year in college because of the COVID. And then, you know, you, then you got a back injury. That's a huge red flag. I think a lot of, a lot of people believe that you fall off my draft board completely if that's the case especially to the extent of how serious that back injury is. Like, it's, it was, it sounded like it was a 50-50 chance that he may not have came back from that. But it seemed like he pushing Benito uh, Isaiah Bugs down the depth chart. So really what your rotation is probably going to be is McNeil, Ana Zorky, Josh Pascal on the inside. And, well, Broderick Martin then Josh Pascal slide on the inside. That's going to be your rotation. See, I basically was believing that it probably was going to be uh, – it was because of how good Broderick Martin was playing, but you got to remember, Broderick Martin is one of, is more of a plugger. He's more of a plugger. He's a run stopper. So, you know, Jones might be a little bit more of that penetrator. So, you know, so now he's gonna be a healthy scratch, and people was just assuming that maybe, excuse me, he got traded or he wasn't healthy enough. No, but it sounds like his Levi and Zorky is past a test, and he ready to go, and he healthy, and his back held up. So, I mean, if he can give you what, what you've been missing the last two years, I told y'all he was the second most important player coming into last year. And I'll explain why. Because you need that push in the middle of the defense. This is why they were sliding Aiden Hutchinson on the inside. This is why they were sliding um, Charles Harris on the inside, trying to get that pass rush on the inside of that, def on the inside of that defense. That's the that's the most disruptive pressure that you can get in defensively is, you know, pressure in the middle of the quarterback face in the middle of that defense. This is why some people blitz them linebackers and, you know, you know, is that's why Warren Sapp was so important in what they did in that Tampa defense. And, you know, you need that twitchy guy in the middle. And if he could provide the penetration that he was showing early in preseason, the his first rookie year and how in that Pittsburgh game, he was in the backfield, it's gonna be over with. Aiden Hutchinson. If he don't have no rookie fall off, no injury, book somebody on that line for 15 sacks, minimum. You know, if Pascal do what he's supposed to do on the inside, he able to generate some pressure on the inside, you probably going to have multiple guys across that line have double-digit sacks. Now, it may not be Anazorki and Pascal so hard to get double-digit sacks on the inside, but somebody on the outside going to eat. Somebody on the outside going to eat. And that's why I told y'all behind Jared Goff, he was a mo and I and I second that again this year. Behind Jared Goff, Anna Zorki and, and Pascal are the two most important players behind Jared Goff. As a, as a one. Because you need somebody that's gonna get that pressure and that penetration in that defense up the middle. If they able to get penetration in the middle of that defense, it's over with. Hutchinson gonna eat, 
James Houston gonna eat, the Core brothers gonna eat, Kaminsky gonna eat. So them as a tandem, you know, spilling each other and all that, they they are more most important than this defense. That's gonna help the back end gel because they ain't gonna have as much time to 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 cover in the back end. It's gonna make the linebackers better. So, you know, they got a nice little blend down there. You got the pluggers and and Martin and and and, and McNeil, and then you got the, the the pass rushers and pass, you know, and everything is when Alan's rookie is good, at least in college, he's everything. He can rush the passer, stop the run, whatever. You know, but then you got Pascal that can rush the passer. Then in situations, you're still going to put Aiden Hutchinson and Charles Harris on the inside. So they have a nice little rhythm going across that defensive line. But, you know, him kind of saying that his career was pretty much, you know, thought to be in jeopardy. Now it makes sense. This is why I don't like really jumping to conclusions. And sometimes that's just what the job details on YouTube where you got to assume and jump to a few conclusions. Um... Sometimes that's just what it is because you just don't know everything. So, you know, in this interview, he basically said the reason he didn't get the inter he didn't get the surgery early on because it was a good chance that he was, you know, he wouldn't recover and his career would be over with. So he tried to let it heal up. He tried to manage the pain. He couldn't manage the pain. I remember the defensive line coach at the time was saying that uh, he couldn't even sit down in meetings. Excuse me. He couldn't even sit down in meetings. So, you know. Think about that for a minute. So it, it's crazy. Super duper crazy. So, I mean, it is what it is. But now it all makes sense. And I know I get it, but I still don't understand his his infatuation in the second round of taking Pascal and Anazorki. Anazorki, Pascal, back to back years. You know, one guy had an injury, one guy had a, Ill, a serious illness and an injury. Like, them second-round picks too important to be gambling on guys that ain't going to be healthy. And now, not only do they got to deliver their weight and go, now they got to double their weight and go because we had to wait for them. What Pascal did last year, it made a difference, but it don't fucking count. You know, what Allen's rookie did his rookie year was really much of nothing. I think he paid the 10, 11 games. It didn't really count. Right now, they depending on them Thursday night, you know, versus Seattle, versus Atlanta, versus, you know, they depending on them. And that's what kind of make the shock factor for Jameson Williams so crazy Why in this video is that you did all this waiting for Jameson Williams. Now you need big things out of him because we had to wait on him. Now you got to accelerate your, your learning curve and hit the ground running. But, hey, check out Detroit Lions Talk Playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. The subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance to get notifications. We go live and drop a video. Financially, you want to support the channel? Cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313, Venmo, CJ Good 313, PayPal link in the description. Everything in the link tree. Peace.